Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Latif, and welcome to episode 20 of the Good Night Freestyle Podcast with Latif Mikado. And yes, I am Latif Mikado, and I just want to congratulate us all for making it to the big 2-0, 20 episodes. Um, we're still pushing towards 30 uh, the first month, but you know what's going to happen is once we hit that, I think it's going to just fly from that point on. Like I said, man... I look forward to it. I kind of like the challenge, the fact that I'm, I'm, I come to this microphone without any idea of what the hell I want to talk about, but I want to talk about something, and I want you guys to listen. How's that? <laughs> um, okay, so but anyway, um, just um, just want to um, just want to reach out and first off, you know, thank everybody who's been hanging in there. Uh, quite a few of you hit my website. I mentioned it yesterday, www.latifmikado.com. Check that out if you haven't. Um, it's not to go on the website and kind of just hang out and look around. And there's nothing there. It's a, it's a landing page. But from there, it'll take you to pretty much everything else that's connected to me, whether it's my blogs, my vlogs, my podcasts, my social media, my books, my videos, and so on. Um, one of the new things that I've been on is TikTok. I've been messing with that with my granddaughter. It's actually kind of cool. I was never into those things. Like, I didn't really get into Vine. I, I looked at it. Like, I knew how to use it, but I never did it. Uh, same thing with Snap, Snapchat. Did it a couple of times. I didn't like the investment of putting time in, and they only last 24 hours and disappear. You know, I don't know. I didn't like that. Um, you know, operates like stories and like Instagram stories and Facebook stories with that whole 24 hour thing. Um, that's cool. But um, I didn't really get into it. You know, um, it, how popular is it now? Uh, I don't know. TikTok pretty much uh, blew it away, you know. So, but again, uh, my handle is Latif Mikado, um, at Latif Mikado for TikTok as well as every other social media. And I'm on, I'm on everything Tumblr. A medium, Pinterest, Reddit. Reddit's difficult. If you guys never tried Reddit, go on to reddit.com and check that one out. Um, that one's uh, tricky. It's tricky. Uh, Twitter, I'm still on Twitter. Facebook uh, seems to be where all the fans are for freestyle. So I spend a considerable amount of time on that platform. And then from there on Instagram. Um, I really want YouTube to be my home. I want that to be my... Uh, my main hub so I've done that for a while uh, because I really really love YouTube I just I think it's just incredible so but anyway um, aside from that listen um, I want to talk to a few of people a few of you guys who might have been ever considered uh, doing any kind of freestyle club promotions okay and again I'm not this is a shameless plug I'm not even gonna tell you where you can get it, but I do. I have a book called Freestyle Promotions and the Simple Steps and the Seven Simple Steps to Getting Started. Now I don't care if you borrow the book from somebody else or you know, whatever. <laughs> you know. Um it's a great foundation if you've ever, ever considered trying your hand at freestyle club promotions. It can be extremely lucrative. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen guys in small, very like medium-sized nightclubs in the back room while they were paying me, you know, uh, um, counting off, you know, thirty, forty thousand dollars that would basically go into their pocket. Um, so if you have a desire, if you have um, a desire for the freestyle music genre, uh, and you 
you know, maybe have this entrepreneurial spirit about yourself that you don't know what you, you want to do, but you want to do something different, you might want to check that out. You know, you don't have to blow it up. You don't have to take it to the to the arenas or the amphitheaters or anything. You could keep it at a very modest nightclub level. Not even a nightclub. You can take it even further down to like a lounge, even a pub. We do a lot of pubs. <laughs> I know it sounds funny. There's only, you know, a few hundred people that can fit in a pub, if that. Sometimes there's only a hundred. But there are also artists that can accommodate that. Of course, with a, you know, a pub, you know, there's certain artists you're not going to be able to get only because their prices are too high. But, you know, you want to book according to your capacities and according to your market. You know, and if you do it and you do it the right way, you do it consistently and you, you, you know, you remain creative and you consult with your agent. Uh, don't, don't, you know, I'm a booking agent and I'm not even telling you to call me. There's other booking agents out there. Um, consult with them. You know, their goal, well, hopefully their goal should be to keep you in business. And the only way you're going to be in business or stay in business is if you have a successful event. So you might want to really, you know, uh, consider talking to your booking agent and consulting with them. And it's free. They should never have to, you know, shouldn't ever want to charge you for any kind of consulting, especially if you're booking from them. If you're booking from them, their job is to help you. It really is. They could say, oh, yeah, my job is only to book. Well, no. No, it really isn't. You know, you're hiring a professional because right now on social media, anybody can book. You can basically reach out to any artist you want and you can book them directly. I never I never recommend that, though. I don't recommend that um, and for, for several reasons. You know, number one, by having an agent on, you don't pay them. See, the artist pays the agent. However, you get a professional on your team that you do not have to pay. I'm talking about a professional with connections and the know-how on how to put this whole thing together. The only reason uh, an artist will not want you to pull in an agent is because the artist will have to pay 10%. But that's very standard. That's very normal. Some agents charge more than 10. I'm Mr. 10%er. But there are some that charge 15. I don't know if there are any out there that are charging 20. But 15 is a pretty popular number. And a lot of these artists don't want to pay that. So what they'll do is they'll go to you and they'll say, hey, listen, uh, you know, I'll work the price out a little better if you come and you just deal with me direct. And basically what they want to do is they want to maintain the connection. They don't want someone in between you and them. Okay? Because if you end up doing another event another time, a lot of times these artists ain't thinking. They want to get back on again. You can book them in three months later. They, they expect you to book them again. An agent's not. An agent, if anything, is going to talk you out of booking the same artist twice, at least in the first year. You know, they're going to give you a recommendation of who could follow up after the one you just purchased, you know, or the one that you just booked. So if you booked one artist, <clears throat> there's always a good follow up to that, you know, and it has to be, um, it, it has to build. It has to build. Sometimes you could go in with a banger, like come in. And really get a strong name. And what this does is this will establish you for your night. This is like really going hard and you really want to get out there. But then from that point on, you have to maintain. The only thing is if you bring a banger, you can't go down that low. Like you can't get like a D or C list artist. You got to stay up maybe a cheaper A list or maybe a B list artist. So if you go from a banger, you can't drop it that hard. Um, but it's a good way of getting your event and the night that you're promoting established. Okay. The other way is to bring an artist that has a strong following, a great show, but that you can already plan out your next, uh, string of artists that you're going to be bringing in. See, an agent will help you with this. An agent can tell you, okay, listen, you know, if you start with Stevie B, okay, boom, you're going to bang it. But then you could only go so low after that. You could probably do after Stevie, maybe, you know, a cover girls, a little Susie, maybe a Lisa, maybe, 
you could go in that that run, but it's hard to go from a Stevie B down to, you know, I don't even want to name a name because they'll get insulted. <laughs> but but uh, you you get the idea. <clears throat> or you can start with a smaller act, maybe a choral, who's not is still an A-list artist, just not expensive, or as expensive as let's say a Cover Girls or a Stevie B. Okay, but an incredible show for the price. And the price that they're asking is fair and it works for them and it'll work for you. And it's a good way of starting. You can start with that. And then from there, you can escalate. You can start building. And the only one that can really help you build the right way will be an agent for two reasons. Number one, they know all the prices, they know all the accommodations, and also they have the connections and they know who works well in what markets not everybody works everywhere everyone cannot work everywhere if there are freestyle fans in miami chicago san antonio texas albuquerque new mexico uh tucson arizona san jose california and so on that's cool there's freestyle fans throughout but they're all specific about the acts that work in their areas. There's only a handful that can go across the board. So it's very important to understand that um, if you want to have a success, a successful event. So, but I do encourage people who, even if it's something that you, you know, you went to a club, you're like, wow, you got excited or something. You know, I get inspired when I see things. If I watch a movie, I get inspired by a lot of times I watch motivational and inspirational stories on T on, on TV or on YouTube or whatever, or documentaries about business and maybe documentaries or biographies on successful people because I like to be inspired. I do not like to run dry. I love to work with a spark of inspiration in me. I love to finish watching something. Sometimes I get so inspired that in the middle of a show, or whatever I'm, I'm watching, I might get up and just, even though my day's over, I might get up and go into the office because all of a sudden I got all these great ideas and I want to use them. I want to utilize them. So, you know, so you might end up going to a club or a concert and suddenly you're inspired. Well, guess what? If you're inspired, even if you have zero money in the bank, call me or call another agent and let's talk. Tell me your ideas. Ask me what it would take. Listen to what I have to say. I can even tell you how you can go about getting the funds. So there are a lot of opportunities. And let me tell you something. If you do it once and you do it right, and you keep it modest, you don't go overboard, you could walk away with probably more money in one night than it would take you to make in your job maybe six months. For some, maybe even a year. So it's very, very lucrative, and if you do it right, it's gonna be smooth, it's gonna go smooth, and you'll be a happy camper. It's when you try to get too big, or you try to cut corners, or you try to save money, or you try to jerk an artist, or you try to get over somehow, that's when shit is gonna hit the fan. That's when things are gonna fall apart. I see it all the time. A lot of times I would guide a promoter onto the fast, onto the right track. And I'll say, listen, this is the way you're gonna handle this. You're gonna do it like this, like this, like this. And they listen and they do it. And a lot of times it's successful. We've had a couple failures, but man, they, I can't even call them failures. They probably just weren't sold out to the max for whatever reason. But they weren't failures. They didn't lose money. But then what happens is they go the second route. And what happens is they, you could, I could already see them going in that area because on the second run, sometimes they don't call me. They basically try to do it themselves because they got to meet the artists. And now since they've put on a show, what happens is, and they got to fly out, Artists start to contact them, especially through social media, or artists that put them on, that they put on, and end up 
contacting other artists. Sometimes promoters even ask, you know, they'll ask an artist, hey, can you, I want to put this one on. Can you get me in touch with that one? Yeah, no problem. And what, what they don't realize is a lot of times the artists will actually try to broker the deal. So they'll go to the other artists and they'll say, hey, I'm doing a show and somebody asks about you. How much you want to charge? And they might say, I'm just going to use a low number not to throw it off. They say $100. And that artist will tell the tell the other artist, okay, cool, I'm going to charge $150 and I'm going to keep $50. And that artist is going to say, that's cool, that's fine. And then they go back and they sell you the show. So not only did you purchase a show, book a show from a non-agent, you actually paid more money. See, as an agent, I don't have to up my price. The artists are going to pay me for the same price that you paid. So, but all you have to do is reach out. If, if it's if if you if you have the bug, if you feel like, and probably the first advice I'm going to give you, and I, I have to use mine because there are no others like it. It doesn't it doesn't exist. There's, there's nobody else did a book on freestyle promotions but me. But I'm going to tell you, listen, get the book. Get the Kindles, $4.99. I mean, that's not going to break you. The paperwork is, uh, pa- paperback is only $9.95. I'm not going to get rich off that. Where I'll get rich is if you blow it up and you keep booking for me. Then I can get rich. So the goal is for you to not get the book, but for you to get the book, read it, implement it, and be successful. That's the goal. That's the ultimate goal. So, but you got to start from somewhere. So, and that's what I did. I created that so that way it's a starting ground. Because people are like, well, I don't even know where to start. Okay, that's fine. Let me put this in your head. Because there's a lot of ways to start. You can start with the idea of the artist. You can start with the idea of the venue. You can start because you got a, a free venue. Uh, you can start because it's Valentine's Day coming up. Or you can do a Mother's Day special. Or an artist that you like is going to be in town doing a bigger venue. And maybe you could get them in your... You know, there's so many different reasons or ways to start. But I'm going to start with a blank slate. And that book is going to show you basically the steps on what to do. And, and the beauty of it is the absolute first chapter is the booking agent. Once again doesn't have to be me it could be any booking agent you know understand this that my success doesn't only rely on you booking my acts or booking through me my success lies in the sustaining of the genre by the consistency by the growth by the you know, it needs to it needs to be working. The market needs to be working. If the cover girls were the only artists in the genre, the genre would be dead. So I can't, I don't want to see these other artists bail or retire or quit. I don't want to see this. It will not benefit me. It won't benefit any of us. So it's important that we have successful events. Some people look at it as, uh, yeah, uh, you know, they might cringe because someone did an event, they're not part of it, and now it was a success, and they, you know, they're a little jealous or envious. You can't, you can't think like that. You got to look at it as a success, the success of the genre itself as a whole. And the more success, more successful it is the more people will want to attend these events. The more people that want, the more in demand these events are, the more artists that get to work. And then also we start to spread into other cities that we haven't gone yet. That's how that works. So we could do all the main main markets. We could do New York City. We can do Dallas. We could do LA or San Francisco. We can do uh, Chicago. But then next thing you know is all these offset markets start to open. Like in Chicago, we got Chicago, but then we got Waukegan, which has a show, which is in the Illinois area. We could do, um, instead of New New York, it might be New Jersey, or it might be one of the boroughs of New York, not just New York City. Uh, Boston, well, suddenly we get Connecticut. 
or we get New Hampshire, New Hampshire. <laughs> uh, so you know what I mean? So that's how these things happen. You got, you got Dallas, next thing you know, we got San Antonio. Then we have Austin. And then we start going things like McAllen and these other cities that not too many people outside of Texas even heard of. So it's all important. It all makes sense. You know, so all I'm trying to do at this point, because I know where we're lacking, we're not lacking of great shows, we're lacking of great promoters. We need the promoters to come on board. We need them to be creative. We need them to be innovative. We need them to be successful. We want them to not only be successful, but we want those promoters' events to inspire other promoters to try their hand. Yeah, they're going to say, oh man, but now it's going to create competition in the area. Well, no, no, it doesn't have to. It's only going to create competition if you're trying to do the same shit as the next guy. But if you can flip your event, set a different theme, do something different that makes yours stand out. Because remember this, the artists are always going to be the same artists. It's pretty much going to be the same routines. It's pretty much going to be the same songs. Nothing changes. So even if you wait six months to bring an artist back uh, or show back in, it's still the same thing. You're not giving anyone anything special. But if you could give them something special, then we can have a different show every week just blocks away from each other. See, right now, the contract state for, for a lot of these events that the artist cannot perform 90 days, 90 mile radius, and sometimes it's 60, about 60 uh, days prior to the event and 30 days after. And that's, that's flexible also because I've done them higher, I've done them lower. I've done them 30 days prior, I've done them 60, I've done them 90, I've done them 120 days. I've done the radius the same way, an hour away, two hours away, three hours away. So it, it, it's all, it all depends. But if we can really, really build this excitement, you know, even if it's a new lineup, if it's a whole different lineup, a lot of times if you'll have a city and then another city is maybe less than an hour away, and the second city doesn't want to do a show, even though they have no intentions of doing the same exact acts. In their mind, oh, well, you know, freestyle was just here. Who's going to want to see it again? A lot of people, especially if you're bringing them something new. See, that's how it gets hot. It's when you let too much time pass that out of sight, out of mind, that whole thing uh, kicks in. Out of sight, out of mind. People don't see events, they don't think about the events. They don't see the artists, they don't think about the artists. But if they see them, they think about them. If they go to the events, they think about it. They start looking around. They start doing the math in their head. They start figuring out that whoever's putting on this event is making a ton of money. And then they say, man, I think I could do this. I wonder how much it would cost. That's the question. Not, not I wonder if I could do this. I wonder how much it would cost. Because honestly, you could be broke as hell. How, let's say I work with promoters that don't even know where they're getting the money from. They'll call me and they'll say, okay, yo, la, I want to do this show. I want to do this act, this act, this act. What am I looking at? I'll be like, okay, you're looking at, you got 20, 25, 25 grand plus the expenses. You know, five, so we're looking about 32,000. Okay, 32,000. I'm thinking I'm doing something on this then. Do you think there'll be a problem? No, I don't. I said, I might have to change one or two. He goes, okay. I'm, I'm going to call you back in a couple of days. They'll call me back in a couple of days with the deposit, which is only 50%. They want to put down the deposit. They want me to get those acts that they just mentioned, and then we get the ball rolling. And then what they do is they hustle to sell those tickets, and that raises the money that they need for the balance to pay the artists, and sometimes for the flights and hotels and so on. So, so there's a lot of opportunities if it's something that you really, really want to do. But I have to encourage Anyone who's ever even thought about it. I think every fan would make a great promoter. I really do. Because you've already invested a lot of time and energy and even money into the genre without any, any ROI. The only ROI, return on investment that you get is the enjoyment. Whether it's from the product that you want to listen to, to the performance that you just watched. That's your, that's your investment. That's the, the return on your investment and you're cool with that and you've been doing it for so many years so honestly who better 
than the fans to try their hands at promotions. Who deserves it the most? Who deserves it? How does a, a promoter that only did a hip hop, knows nothing about the genre, call me and say, hey, I heard about this freestyle thing. You think you could put one together for me? How much would it cost me? And they're used to paying like three, four times the amount because they're doing hip hop or R&B. And when I tell them, they don't, they don't flinch. They're like, what? Is that, what, what does that include? Is that, are they actually gonna show up, <laughs> you know? I'm like, yeah, that's their, that's their fee. It's, you know, it's a different ball game. And they say, okay, where do I need to start? Well, you gotta give me half of that money. And then we're gonna do this paperwork, I'm gonna get these artists in and we get the ball rolling from there. But you know, and those guys come in and they come off. Okay, I'm glad. I'm never gonna turn them around or turn them down. No, no artist is gonna turn them down. But they don't deserve it, not like a fan does. They really don't. A lot of times they don't even know the name of the artist. I just did a show and this guy kept kept referring um, to Susie as Little Debbie. I'm like, Little Debbie? That's a freaking cake, man. <laughs> you know? It's either Debbie Deb or Little Susie. Which one do you want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one, Little Susie. Everybody talking about Little Susie. Okay, yeah. And then a day later, hey, yeah. So, so how we're looking with Little Debbie? I'm like, bro, it's not Little Debbie, man. It's Little Susie. <laughs> so I get that all the time. I get that all the time. So it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, they call Angel Angie. What about Angie? Can we get Angie by herself? You know. Okay, well, do you know? I, I, you know, I know she does shows by herself. Can we do Angie by herself? You know, or I want to do the Cover Girls, but you know, with, with Angie. They told me make sure Angie's in. I'm like, you mean Angel? Yeah, I don't have an Angie. There's no Angie. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, so they don't even know the genre. They don't know any of the songs. They don't know the artists. They don't know the history. All they know is that someone told them that this is something they should look into. And they do, and they buy, and they make it happen. And they listen to me. See, those people don't go direct to the artists because they don't know who to go to, and they really don't trust them. But they have their connection with me now because of most of the time I was recommended. And they want to consult. And at that point, my goal is to give them and put together the best possible lineup for that market and kill it. Why? So they could keep it going. Okay, guys, that's about it. I'm going to shut down. I appreciate you, as I always do. Until tomorrow, be cool, and good night, freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.